You might say I have a thing for old, neglected, and worn out Chevy trucks. And that's the whole basis behind this project here, what I call the ugly truck. It's a 2000 Chevy Silverado extended cab, short box, two wheel drive. Now, so far I've done a few things to it. When I first picked it up, it had a blown transmission, a 4L60, so I swapped that for a stronger 4L80. And from there, I cleaned up the outside of the truck just a little bit, and I swapped on some later model wheels and tires. So today, the very next thing that I need to replace is some of the suspension components because this guy has 326,000 miles on it, and the steering is pretty well shot. When you drive down the road, you kind of got to do this to maintain a straight line. And when I was putting the wheels and tires on it, well, when I was underneath, I kind of wiggled a few things around. And I noticed the tie rod ends, well, they're shot. I can move the wheel back and forth about a half an inch. So not only is it not pleasant to drive, well, it's kind of a safety thing. So I need to take care of all of that today. But it's also a great opportunity to address the stance of this truck because the back end is quite a bit higher than the front. And obviously we need to go down just a little bit. So I did take some measurements and the back end of the truck sits about three and a quarter inches higher than the front. The front's 32 and seven eighths, 33 and a quarter on one side and on the other respectively. And that's basically just a measurement from the ground straight through the center of the wheel to the center of the fender opening. Based on the tire size that I have currently, I took a few measurements and I'm gonna lower this thing two inches in the front and four inches in the rear. I'm gonna be disassembling the entire front steering and suspension systems today. Basically, everything that has miles on it and could be worn out is going to get replaced. This includes the upper and lower control arms on both sides because in each there are two bushings and one ball joint that are worn. Also, the wheel bearings, those have some miles on them, the brakes, and the steering system. There's an inner and an outer tie rod, and those are pretty much the most worn parts of the whole system. But again, every moving part in the front suspension of this truck is going to be replaced. Okay, oh. pull it towards you. Okay. See? See how it's going to go that way? Pull, pull, pull. Oh, you got it. Push. Oh. That's how you remove the lower control line. Good job. See? Came right out. High five. Good job. Now I'm gonna go ride scooter for a minute because <laughs> it looks like mom doesn't want to um, wash her car yet. He's gonna go ride a scooter. With the suspension teardown complete, it's time to talk about what we're gonna do to put this thing back together again. And like I said, we are replacing everything. Now you could go out and buy individual components and save a little bit of money. I'm talking about things like ball joints and bushings. I even have a little shop press over there in the corner that I picked up from Harbor Freight and you could go and press all the existing stuff out of the control arms and press the new ball joints and bushings in. But Think about this for a second. There are four control arms in total, which means, with some quick math, there are eight bushings to press in and out and four ball joints to go in and out. And that's just a pain in the butt and I don't like dealing with it. I grabbed a complete set of four loaded control arm assemblies. They're a Moog brand. And then I bought two new wheel bearings, one for each side. And as far as the spindles go, I found some Belltech two inch drop spindles and that is what's gonna lower the front end of the truck down using my existing coil springs. Now, as far as the brakes are concerned, I do have some new parts for those as well, but I'm gonna wait until I get the steering taken care of before I tackle the brakes. The front end goes together pretty quickly because it's the exact opposite of the steps that we took during disassembly, and they're factory parts, so everything is fitting perfectly. I am reusing the original factory upper alignment tabs just because that'll get me close enough until I can get the truck to an alignment shop. And as far as the bolts go for the control arms, I'm just snugging them up until the weight of the truck is on the ground. Then I can fully tighten everything so the bushings don't get bound up in the wrong position. Now you do have to use a floor jack or some other means to compress the coil spring enough so the lower control arm can swing up so you can get the spindle on. Now you do want to be careful because there is a fair amount of stored energy in the spring and it could cause injury if the thing pops out. But once the shock is bolted in place, it'll hold it all together. So to wrap up the driver's side of the front end rebuild, all I've got to do is throw on the rotor, the pads, the caliper, and the bracket, and it will be taken care of. But like I said, I've got an upgrade planned, and I'll get to that just a little bit later on. For now, I've got to knock out the passenger side, and then I'm on to this steering.
With the front suspension completely taken care of, it's time to move on and address the steering because that's basically what prompted this whole rebuild in the first place. The original rack and pinion has, again, 326,000 miles on it and the original tie rod ends are severely worn and it leaks. So instead of just going out and buying individual components and putting my original rack and pinion together, I just decided it is more economical in the long run and I'll probably have a better result if I just replace it entirely with a remanufactured rack and pinion. Now, it's a direct replacement from the existing factory part. It bolts in the exact same places, has the exact same hookup from the steering and the exact same hookup for the hoses. Once the new part is installed, all I've got to do is put some new tie rod ends on the outers, connect them to the spindles, and the front end rebuild is done. The Ugly Truck is a 2000 model year, and it comes from the factory with a 12 inch disc brake rotor. Now this stops the truck okay, but these are quite rusty, and the pads that came along with it, well there's really not a whole lot of brake material left on them, so it's a great opportunity to upgrade. Now in 2005, even in the same body style of truck, they got a factory larger brake upgrade to 13 inches. Now, it's a one inch larger rotor which will give more leverage for braking. This is a aftermarket rotor, but you can pick up a factory one from AutoZone, O'Reilly's, or Napa, or just about any parts store. But to get these to bolt on, you will need a different caliper bracket. These are a little bit harder to find. I had to go to a junkyard and grab them. They painted them red. And then the caliper, you can get these just about anywhere, any parts store or whatever. And the same case with the the pads. So, a little bit of shopping around at a parts store and you've got yourself a factory big brake conversion kit. So more or less that's what it takes to rebuild the front steering, suspension and brakes on a new body style Chevy Silverado. Now, for me, there are a few things that I do have left to finish up, like connect the brake hose and then bleed the brakes, top off the power steering system, and then get an alignment on the front end. But when I do finally drive this truck again, it's going to be a whole lot smoother and straighter than it was when I backed it into the shop just a few hours earlier. Because, well, basically everything in the front end is going to be brand new. Now, obviously, I still have to lower the rear end of the truck as well, but that's going to have to wait until a later date because, well, I've used up all the free time that I have for this weekend. I do want to say thank you guys for watching. I honestly appreciate each and every one of you. And if you guys want more content on the new body style Silverado, well, just stay tuned because I've got a whole lot more in store. But until next time, thanks for watching. I'm LT. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Well, it's clearly a bit high in the back end still, but I just had to get it outside to kind of show you guys what it looks like. Two inches lower to the front, stock height in the rear, stock 18 inch wheels, 265, 65, 18 tires. Looking pretty good.